What's up YouTube, this is Jonathan with TLD. I've had a lot of requests regarding the 13-inch Core 2 Duo MacBook Pro, and if I could compare it to the bigger brothers, the i7 and the i5. Now, I'd love to be able to get my hands on all three of the models, but unfortunately, I can't at the moment. So I'm bringing you guys the next best thing. I got my hands on my girlfriend's old Core 2 Duo 2008 MacBook Pro. So I'm gonna do some benchmarks, show you guys the speed differences, and you guys will be surprised. It is a big difference, so let's go ahead and check it out. Now aside from the slight hardware bumps, the 2008 MacBook Pro has the exact same Core 2 Duo processor as the new 13 inch models. Let's go ahead and jump in and see the differences. Initially you guys looking at this, it's not too much different. The Core 2 Duo has a 2.4 GHz processor, the same as the i5. Now the i7 is slightly faster at 2.66, but as we move on you guys will see the difference. The Core 2 Duo has no turbo boost so it caps out at 2.4 GHz, whereas the Core i5 and the i7 give you a significant boost when you need it. Now the same goes for hyper threading. On the Core i5 and the i7, the OS sees it as a quad core CPU with two physical, two virtual. The Core 2 Duo only has two cores and that is it. The 2008 MacBook Pro, which I'm using in this video, had a GeForce 8600 GT. This is very comparable to the new 320s that are in the 13 inch models. This way you guys can get an idea of how it performs. Now in Geekbench 64, the Core 2 Duo was smoked by the i5 and the i7 with the i7 almost doubling it. As we move on to Cinebench CPU, the Core i7 almost doubles it again, and you guys can see the Core i5 is still significantly faster than the Core 2 Duo. As we jump over to the graphics card department, the Core i5 and the Core i7 nearly doubled it as far as frames per second. This means smoother playback for video games, just in case you guys are wondering that on the 13 inch models. Now we get to handbrake, and you can see the i7 and the i5 absolutely smoke it again. The Core 2 Duo had an export of 22 minutes, while the Core i5 came in at 15, and the i7 at 13. Same thing in compressor, 4 minutes and 3 seconds for the Core 2 Duo, 2 minutes and 30 seconds for the Core i5, and all the way down to a minute 49 seconds for the Core i7. For an iMovie import, the Core 2 Duo took 65 seconds, the Core i5 took 52 seconds, and the Core i7 took 41 seconds. As we move on to the export, this is where you guys can see the huge difference. 11 minutes, 34 seconds for the Core 2 Duo, 5 minutes for the i5, and only 3 minutes, 43 seconds for the Core i7. All right, now you guys can see there's a huge difference as far as performance goes between the Core 2 Duo, the i5, and the i7. Obviously, the 2010 models are going to be slightly faster, but you guys have a ballpark of how they're going to perform compared to the other models. Now, I don't think the 13-inch model is a bad place to go. I think if you're doing web, email, stuff like that, it's a great little portable computer. Plus, it's easier to transport because of the size. But if you guys are looking to do multitasking, heavier tasks, the i5 and the i7 are much more future-proof. I definitely say it's worth the upgrade to go that route if you can do it. So if you guys got to save up for another month or two to get the i5 or the i7, I'd say do that. It's more future-proof, like I had mentioned, and it's just going to be a better investment for you. I hope this helped. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like always, feel free to subscribe. I got much more on the way.